Welcome. It's a Thursday. Welcome to Clock in the Gallop. We're on the 2nd of February. We're out at the Vol Classic track today, despite the fact that they've had a lot of rain there. And there's a bit of a role reversal here because Lyle's taken the day off from the track and I'll be traveling out there today. But Lyle, always good to have you on Clock in the Gallop anyway. And um, we're hoping that you enjoy your day off. Put your feet up and watch the racing coming out from the Vol today. You've studied the card, though. Yes, I have. I, I look forward to watching you. That's going to be fun for a change, actually watching. And uh, yeah, I didn't think it was an easy card. but uh, And you say, as the, and there's been a bit of rain, so we need to tread carefully. Yeah, so quite a bit of rain. In fact, uh, there were talk, there was some talk uh, about possibly moving it if the rain persisted. But today, there's only expects to be a couple of millimetres on the track today. But the track condition as we start the Vol meeting is soft. So the important thing is we've got a soft track, a penetrometer of 27 to start off the day, which may um, improve during the course of the day. But 42 and a half millimetres of rain, Lal, fell in between Tuesday and today. So that's quite a bit of rain. 42 and a half mils. So therefore, that's that's quite, and in addition to yeah. that, 18 millimeters of, of irrigation. So you're talking over 60 millimeters of, of water down on that track in the last uh, 24 to 36 hours. It's quite a bit. That's a lot. But from experience, the vault does tend to take water very well, just in my yeah. in my time. Very well. We've arrived there, we've arrived there when it's been raining for nine hours and we've actually raced. Yes. So yeah. I think it'll be okay. So very quickly, uh, Mark van Rensburg uh, preempted his uh, return to the saddle um, on Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think it was on the weekend. Um, uh, well, it might have been. I don't know when it was. Was it? Was it Tuesday that he that he tried to? He might be right. He had Tuesday, one ride. He was there on Tuesday. Yeah, he had, he had one, one ride. ride. He had one ride, and then he was booked off for the rest of the day. I, I think you know he yeah. suddenly realised that it wasn't uh, so. Yeah. Um, wise to come back and, and ride so quickly again after that fall, which, well, by the way, was terrible. I called that yeah. race. It was an awful fall. And uh, he was lucky to come away with just a few scrapes here and there. Now, Lyle, right. we're on the back of our direct line. And just a, a public um, thank you to our, to those out there that supported us. I know we got a lot of support of people rallying behind Clock in the Gallop for our direct line. Um, I know that Joburg was obviously the best meeting. We had a we had a stormer of a meeting on Sunday, an absolute blind of a meeting. And then the Mets, uh, you know, we were divided. There was divided mm. opinion on who would win the Met and uh, the other race on the day. But I think by and large, um, there was a great reception from our followers. Yeah, it really was. It was a lot of fun putting it together as well. And as you say, just Sunday alone, I uh, think a lot of people made a lot of money. So that was the good news. We really were on form on Sunday. Yeah. Pity about that objection in the last, which cost us a little bit because we were sort of yeah. laughing all the That's way to the true. bank when Iron Tail got through. But uh, the objection, yeah. which I'm not going to elaborate on, but another, I thought another very, very dubious decision by the Stipes there on the on that objection, which followed in the footsteps of a previous decision that made with almost more or less the same uh, situation. But uh We'll come to that at another time on another program on another day. But Lyle, we've got racing today at the Vol Classic yeah. track. I'm going to bring up the betting. Let's go through the nine races carded today um, at the Vol Classic track. The first couple of races are juvenile races. So we'll talk about these juveniles in a moment. Let's go to that first race, which is a thousand meter maiden juvenile plate. And in the first race, uh, there's a jockey change for the favourites here. Number two, Circle of Grace, is Samanga Kamalo. And that's the only change there. In fact, no, there's one other. Number four, Pomo Clapper, has been gelded. Um, yes. So that's the other change. But all the money's been for Circle of Grace. You turned out a very useful debut run. It certainly did, Nico. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put it past the son of Patala Palace winning uh, with Samanga Kamalo aboard. Nicely drawn as well. But um, I'm worried about this race, Nico. Being a two-year-old uh, juvenile race over a thousand meters and a few first timers that uh, could be well bred. And another thing I want to say straight away here: this is a this is a BSA bonus race, hundred thousand rand. Yes. And a, and a person like Mr. Roy Magna is a very shrewd man, Mr. Yes. Magna. Yes. So just be careful. I think you need to be careful in this first race. The horse like number one as well. Uh, um, one, three, those two on debut. Um, I thought they might be here for the correct reason. So for that reason, okay, next question I want to ask you. Yeah. The form lines of Circle of Grace and then, of course, Virginia Beach, which is Courageous and number six, Heirloom. 
Yeah. I, I didn't know which form line to go on. So if we go on the Virginia Beach form line, I actually have Courageous at the top of my, my selections <coughs> as my first selection, being five and a half kilograms better off with number six heirloom for two and a quarter lengths. So right. I actually went five, six, two, obviously. And then I'm very respectful of number three and number one. Yeah. Um, again, it, it could be tough. I, I preferred circle. I must admit, I was I was strong in the camp of Circle of Grace from the form horses. But like you say, when BSA are giving these 100,000 rand checks, it's advisable. And I, I'm, again, pointing people towards this because um, it's something that you have to certainly factor in when you're doing your analysis. The traders are chasing that 100 grand. They get uh, 10% of it. So they get only 10 grand, but the owner gets 90 grand. It'll be, you know, and, and the owner to get an extra 90,000 rand, Lyle, um, from winning yeah. a race it is, is big. And the trainers, yep. the, the the owners rather, um, will will be very thankful to the trainer, and more than likely will send the trainer another horse. Um, True. So you have to look and see which horses are eligible for the hundred thousand rand bonus. Now, in this race, you've got all of numbers one, two, three, five. No, sorry, one, two, three, six, seven, and eight are the ones. Correct. That are eligible if they win. So yes. I think the winner would come from one of those. Um, I'm in agreement with you. I think number three is a danger, Max the Magician. I want to see what he looks like at the track because yeah. Roy Magna, as you said, is a shrewdy. This is a son of what a winter. They've got Muzzy Yeni on. I think that may well be a danger. I'd like to see what he looks like. By the way, number one, um, Johan van Furen is expecting this to run on into the minor money. Uh, American okay. and Venice. Um, I think it's a bit short for it. It's the half brother to Permessa Avanti, by the way, who uh, mm, okay. who uh, he also trains. Um, yes. And then just quickly on the seven, Mount Etna. Uh, she's a daughter of Erupt. I think she again is another one looking for further. She's the half sister to Come yeah. Out and to Green Bubbles. So again, I think you've got a point there with that 100,000 Rand bonus. Look out and see which horses are eligible. It is in the computer form. It does tell you which ones are eligible, and I think the winner will come from one of them. But I am I am in the camp of Circle of Grace, but I think a first-timer may um, crop up here. Or pop yeah, in the mix. Okay, yeah. got you. Good race. Makes it interesting. Yeah, it makes it interesting. Let's go to race two, mm. which is the start of the bipot. In the second race, number 10, Sugary Sweet is now the mount of J.P. van der Merwe. And to the horses that are eligible here are quite a few of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's easier if we go through the ones that don't qualify. The ones that don't yeah. qualify are two, Global Thunder, um, five, Leaving Las Vegas, and... 10 sugary sweets are the ones Correct. that don't qualify. So that said, look at the money for the first two. Number one, call me when you need me. And number two, Global Thunder. Have you got anything to tell me on these two? Oh, you know, Nico, I, I thought this race here was, was stronger from a breeding point of view. And there's a lot more speed in this race here. So for that reason, six first timers, I look at the mares, of course. And um, the one horse, obviously the money coming, the mare won from 12 to 16. The two Global Thunder, the mayor one from 12 to 14, definitely speed there. Speed in that five, leaving Las Vegas, the mayor, in fact, won over a thousand meters. The six, missed in Scotland, the mayor won three times from 800 to 1200, so a lot of speed there. Move and over, number seven, the mayor won over a thousand. The eight, Spring in Heaven, also five wins over sprints this mayor. And then uh, number nine, Stormy Choice, also won seven times the mayor from a thousand meters upwards. So yeah. to be honest with you, Nico, I thought this was an incredibly difficult race. And uh, I don't mind if you laugh at me with my selections. I'm probably going to lean towards a horse like number nine from five and seven. But I have no idea. I'm, yeah. I'm thumb sucking. Yeah, very tough indeed, um, this race. Again, we're going to revert to um, what we see on the track. Um, I thought the one was bred to go further, being a daughter of master of my mm. fate, to be honest. Um, I see there's a lot of support for it into 13 to 10, but I think the jury may well be out on that. It's the half-sister to Bumra, um, who's by Flower Alley. I just think that needs further. I'm interested in the support for Corey Lensley's horse, Global Thunder. 
because the mother, uh, Rain Tonair, won at two years old. So she was a juvenile winner. She won when she was two. So it comes from a bit of juvenile form. But the thing that interested me here was was the six, funny enough, missed in Scotland. Mm. Because we know how good Paul match it is with the babies. And this is his first baby to run for the season. I looked it up. Um, and he is he does train juvenile winners. And this is 20 to 1. Again, I don't I don't think that's out of it. Uh, the nine, no. David Nevin Hazen stable back and form. This is littered with issues. And then of the ones that have okay. run. I, funny enough, preferred the seven to the eight. I think the betting mm, slightly prefers the seven to that, but I do prefer move on over to spring in heaven. Um, yes. Again, you mentioned it. I, I don't like this race. I think the first time no. they may well win, but the question is which, but which one. one. Yeah. Which so one? I'm, glad, I'm glad you're on course because you can have a look at them. And then just to mention that DSA again, um, a certain Mr. Arun Chada, also a very shrewd man. He knows yes. where the BSA races are and he's got yes. two runners here. You've got As two we said, yeah. seven and eight. So yeah. beware there too. Yeah. Uh, load up in the opening leg of the bipod. Be warned that that is mm. not easy. Put in quite a few. Yeah. Race yeah. three is the start of the PA. It runs at 25 past one. It's a maiden plate over 1,450 meters. Here there are two scratchings, number four, Broadway, and number 11, uh, Chateau Futura. A jockey change. No, there isn't a jockey change, but there's a blinker update. Number eight, Williamson has now got blinkers on. Well, this little slinky pimpy may be the shortest price. It is the shortest price source in the day. And uh, Philip Vermeulen, we we're chatting about him the other day. Just a wonderful mm. chap. Uh, they won yeah. again at Savannah Storm. They won the Wolf Power 1600. Um, they've done so well with that horse. But, but this horse is at three seconds in a row. Looks to win the favorite. Yeah, thank goodness we've got one best bet on the card because I, I can't see this. On paper, this horse can't lose. Um, the, the son of Coup de Gras, the form lines are fine. The mayor was talented. The 1450 is going to be no problem. The draw of seven is okay. So certainly best bet on the card. I don't like the price at four to ten, but I do think that he'll win. And then after that, I was just trying to find a bit of value in the form of number nine. Count your chances. Yeah, stop there yeah, because they've just, scra they've just scratched that. I'm just looking now. Oh, the nine. The nine, the nine not eating up has just been scratched uh, about five minutes ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's making the race easier for the favourites. Then number 10, efficient trade, I thought, could uh, be an improver with those blinkers on. And number two, fast duty. So this is quite an easy race. I think one from 10 and two. End of story. Yeah, I'm going for one. And um, the horse that I like to improve a little bit is number six, Air Fusion. Um, purely on account of the fact that the mother IC Air was a prolific stayer mm. and is related, this horse is related along the lines to that uh, very good filly, Make It Snappy, who everyone yep. is all the rage on for the Met. So I think this horse is going to improve over the extra trip and they got Gavin Lorena back on. I mean, it's interesting to see Gavin has finished 11 lengths back on it, uh, 13 lengths yep. back on it, and gets back aboard, which is strange. Yeah. But mm. true. So, um, true. I thought that was possibly the improver, the 14 to 1 horse, number 6 Air Fusion. So scratch gotcha. 4, 9, and 11 on our scratch in the third race. But I think it's going to take a good one to beat Slinky Mapimpi. Yeah. Race 4 is the start of the pick 6 at 2 o'clock. It's a pinnacle stakes, fillies and mares over 1,600 metres. Um, here, there are no changes in the fourth race. And there's a field of only seven, but I thought this was trappy. Yeah, I agree with you, Nico. Um, it's a pinnacle where there, there's not much difference between the points. But after saying that, I've eventually tipped them one, two, three, seven. So I'm going against, obviously, number five, Ululach, who's weighted second best, just not in the best of form. So I'm just ignoring that one today. So then that leaves me one, two, three. And the seven, who's not particularly well weighted compared to the rest of the field, if you go on that last run, was um, just ahead of number two, Hollywood bound and is two and a half kilograms worse. So theoretically, number seven should be beaten by two. So I'm going one, two, three, and seven. And theoretically, I'd expect them to run something like that. Yeah, there's not much between them though. Um, the question mark is, I think, the distance of sixteen hundred meters. Yeah. Um, you know, Marigold Hotel hasn't won in a while. Um Hollywood Bound, for me, is more on form. So of those two, I'd probably lean towards Hollywood Bound slightly. 
I'm worried about the trip for a horse like Supreme Quest. I think she's more effective over shorter than a mile. Um, Gilded Butterfly is more effective over further than a mile, I think. I think we're agreed on that one. Yeah. Um, yes. And then it leads me to an interesting horse that I thought might have a Shivers. chance, and that is Shivers. Can I, can I just interrupt you? Because it's a, you make a good point. On the sound of warning form line, yeah. she's got number one held. I hear you, Nico. So, so the reason why I put Shivers in was because I don't know about – I know that the last time she ran, I went for her, and I saw the comment from the stable was needed. Oh. The question mark is, is yeah. if she's going to need it today. Um, I yeah. thought she might be the lurker in the pack here, Shivers, because she was a pretty decent horse when Dory Sham trained her. And uh, Chase Mojan knows her well. Uh, maybe I might bump into Chase before the meeting starts and ask him what he thinks of Shivers, because he must have ridden her at work. And then Queen of Shadows, as you quite rightly mentioned, um, cannot be left out of the equation, although it looks like Hollywood Bound has her beat on the on the on under your spell run. So for me... Yeah. Two and six were possibly my top ones from one and seven. Um, okay, got you. So yeah. same, same numbers, the wrong way, different different way around. Different way around, yeah. Okay, I want to move to race five. And just to quickly let you know yeah, that there is a late scratching here that Give Me a Flame has come out. So I'm just picking up now that number one is a scratch off its feed. And number nine, English Primrose, written by Dennis Schwarz. Um, but you can scratch number one, Give Me the Flame. Um, who was set to carry a 58 and a half with the apprentice allowance over there. Now, this race was horrible. Um, the, horrible. the other scratching, by the way, is six time for that, who would have had her third run in less than a week, mm. um, or in about a week. So she's out. So we're eight horses in the field, and I think it looks like a field race, to be honest, because um, I like a horse or two, but I'm not positive about it. What do you like? 100%. I think it's a field race, absolutely impossible. And I'm leaning towards number nine, English Primrose. Uh, this is um, now Dennis Shaw's Lucky Ud Larkas, drawn two. And if you look at her form lines, compared to a horse like, um, just want to see which one it was. I think it was um, number three, Oyster, yeah, Oyster King. Just way stronger form lines, to be honest. So yeah. 54 kilograms, drawn two. Um, 17 winners have come through through and won from the last five runs and that merit rating, I mean, this is getting ridiculous, down to a 54. So that was my value in the race. Uh, then number three, Oyster King, also way down in uh, class here, even though carrying 60 kilograms, I know this horse well, because always chats to me about this horse. And when he's well, you have to be very careful of him. So he could win a race like this. And of course, number two, Wandering Star, who on that run behind Pragmatist was one and a quarter lengths behind number six, who's now scratched, of course, but would have been four and a half kilograms better off. So I've got nine, three, two, even almost like number seven, but very open, Nico. Don't like it. Yeah, so interesting you say your horse is number nine English Primrose because I said to you that I chatted to Neil Andrews today and uh, just briefly, oh. this, and he likes your horse. So he is on oh. Primrose as well. He does oh, we go. English Primrose and he may well put this as his price booster of the day. I don't know what he's going to do later on when he does his price boosters, but uh, he did quite like that. I was more in the camp of almost like Parker Getrix. Mm -hmm. um, sure. I, I preferred that to the stable companion Oyster King, although Oyster King did bounce back to form, but I was leaning towards horses after number six for the winner. Um, yeah. I thought that the winner would come from seven down. Um, Big City Girl, the question mark is the trip of a mile. I went back yes. and looked. She's had two runs over the mile, but she comes in with no weight on her back. And for that reason, I think she has to be slung in for good measure. So I'm happy with seven downwards. Tara E.T., I'm yep. not as big on as the other three, um, but I thought a lighter weight would win this race. So I'm going from seven down. Agreed. I would put number three in as the one heavyweight. Yeah. Oh, Nick, yeah. I, I remembered what I was saying to you um, when I was studying the form here. Number nine, English Primrose. Number 10, Big City Girl. I just forgot which line I was, uh, which horse I was comparing. Yeah. In the last five runs of English Primrose, 17 winners. Yeah. In the last seven runs from Big City Girl, two winners. Yeah. It is ridiculous how different these two form lines are. So I'm with yeah. Neil on this one. Okay. That's uh, the talk uh, yeah. from Locking the Gallup team on race five. English Primrose comes out pretty high up in the order. I'm a Parker Getrix man. I'll be going for that as well as uh, the other ones that we've mentioned there. So we move on to the sixth. 
at 10 past three. It's a merit rated 84 handicap over 2,000 meters. Uh, there are two scratchings here, number four, the brief, and number five, great affair. So four and five are scratched from race six. And then there was another change, uh, which I wanted to quickly wrap up on. No, there wasn't. In fact, it was in race seven. So just the scratchings here, four and five. Now, this horse, total protection. Let's talk about him first. When the gates opened last time out, he literally just stood. He had never done it before. I think you spoke to the Fortunes, and they said, well, we don't know what I happened. Did. What did they say? Andrew Fortune, was, Andrew Fortune was absolutely shocked. He couldn't believe the horse to that. Ryan Munger was so distraught because they really thought he was going to win. So, yeah, they, they were very sad about the incident. Now, what does that mean for today? I mean, there's no guarantee that he's not going to do the no. same thing today. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I can probably say the same as we did last time. If he jumps, he's, well, I'm not going to say he will win, but if he jumps, he's a massive runner, obviously. Yeah. On that run behind Porto Manzano, he's a massive runner. But he does have yeah. to carry 61 kilograms. It's not going to be easy. So this horse, Celestial City, is the favourite at 14 to 10. And then you've got total protection at 22 to 10. And then you've got 9 to 2 and 7 to 2 future Pearl and top sale. Again, whilst it may appear very simple to work out, is it? No. Let's do this for the fourth consecutive time, Nico. We have beaten Celestial City three consecutive times. Yeah. And I'm going to try and do the fourth time. I and mean, I'm sorry, I want Celestial City to win, of course, the beautiful, beautifully bred son of Silvano. I hope yeah. he wins. But again, like we have done the last three times, turn over the page to a horse called Top Sail. In the Maidens, Top Sail ran half a length behind Celestial City, one kilogram better off. So there we go, straight away, there's nothing between them. Mm. Secondly, if you look at the maiden win of Top Sail, he won here, course and distance, in a time of 121.43. That's a very fast time. And he's six kilograms better off today than he was when he won his maiden. Mm. So, for me, this is the horse to beat. Number eight, I know it sounds ridiculous because he's coming out that of... Is a fast, you mentioned the times there. It is a fast time because when you go to the course yeah. record, and we'll bring up the course record a bit later on, I'm yeah. going to about in another instance. But if you look at the course record, the course record is 120,64. Yeah. You're talking yeah. only 0.8 of a second outside of course With 58. And yeah. With 58 kilograms. Yeah, and it's down yeah. six kilos. So, so I get you there. I don't think this race is, again, as clear-cut as it purports to no. be. Um, look not. at the horse, for example. I'm not saying that he's in the race with a, with a big winning chance, but look at a horse like Elusive Swan. Now, I know it's 25. I know it's the biggest yeah. outside in the field. But yeah. his course and distance form ain't bad. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm going to add. Can I add on to yours? Kentanen Bay. Is quite highly thought of by the stable. Yes. This is another horse. How much is it? 20 to 1. They could also pop up. These yeah. horses are just out of their maiden, some of them. And yeah, I'd be very um, careful. I hate race. to say it, uh, Lyle, but I, I'm not comfortable with this race either. Um, no, I'm not either. comfortable with this race either. I thought it was trappy. While Celestia yeah. might run into the placings, uh, we probably will run into the placings for the PA. Total prediction. We don't know what's going to happen with him. He may stand, and people, again, will scratch their heads. But, I mean, that didn't come out of nowhere. Or it might have come mm. out of nowhere. But, I mean, we can't take it for granted that he's going to go today. If he does, he's still got to carry the 61 to win. And he's got to give top Correct. sale nine. Nine. To a horse, nine that ran point eight, a horse that ran 0.8 of a second behind the horse record, he's got to give nine kilograms. When you do a bit of lateral form using Billy Bow Legs, now if you do yeah. the exercise, and I promise you I spent a lot of time on this last night, when you look at Billy Bow Legs and you look right across all the form line there, Future mm -hmm. Pearl comes into it because it's yes, it would. three and a half. And remember, we took Future Pearl strongly on the show when Siyanda Sasiba rode it to win. It was eight to one. We couldn't believe the price. It shortened to four to one and one like a good thing, beating Lebeccio. I'm yes. worried about this race. Me I'm too. And the only, I had, I had uh, Future Pearl as my fifth selection. The only, re the only problem with um, Future Pearl is those last three form lines have produced absolutely nothing. Yeah. But it doesn't mean he can't win. I, I yeah. agree with you. This is a tough, yeah, tough race. Not... Yeah, I've for got... that reason, I'm I'm happy to sit on top sale each one. I think it will give us a good run. Could be, could be. You know, you mm. you bring up a very valid point there. I I'm not just not comfortable with that race. If I had to choose 
um, a rover, I'd probably go for Future Pearl. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, even me mentioning also, if I mention oh. Elusive Swan at 25 to 1, then it, it, it's upset material in that. Exactly. Way. Okay, let's go 100%. to race seven at quarter to four. This is a merit rated 96 handicap, a sprint 1,000 meters. Uh, no scratchings here, but uh, Ryan Munger now hops aboard Umtombo Walwazi, number nine, is Munger's right. Number three, Samuel Salt has blinkers on and a compression mask on. And then EMFs go on number eight, Windwater. And number nine has Alamites in front only. So there's been a few changes here to this race. What's your feeling in race seven? I thought this was a good race, in fact, and I've ended up going with number two, Sheldon, because Sheldon on that run behind Flower Bomb holds number seven set to go. Set to go and Umtumbo Wawazi are on top of each other on that run behind Mover and Shaker. There's nothing between them. So because of that, I'm going for number two. He's a very good sprinter, the son of Kawari with Gavin aboard. Um, that'll be my first selection from the value number seven set to go, so to speak. Number nine, Umtumbo Wawazi, and I'm not going to leave out number eight, Wind Water, who does have 53 and a half, one for one over course and distance, and I do think will improve with time. But I'm a bit worried about the thousand meters um, for number eight. So two nine seven eight, Nico. Two seven nine eight. My um, my gut feel here, if the if the track stays wet, is to look for horses drawn bigger up the straight. Mm. Um, but if you look bigger. You're going to find horses like May Queen, who won very well last time out yep. um, with Randall Simons. Um, you're going to find those horses as opposed to maybe even horses like Samuel Salt, as opposed to Sheldon and uh, Set to Go and um, Windwater, drawn to more, more towards the inside. Um, I'm expecting uh, the interesting choice of rider for Windwater. Um, what do you make of that? Kamala hardly rides for Jan. And... Um, is it very limited opportunities for that stable? So that's a very good point you, that you do make there. I mean, this horse is doing absolutely nothing wrong. Yeah. Uh, 53 and a, and a half kilograms. I would not leave this out of anything. I yeah. just don't know how good he is. And um, when you look at uh, form, I keep on going back to the form lines of Sheldon. I and mean, if you look at Sheldon's run against, and then, you know, Samuel Salt and May Queen, Sheldon's run against a lot stronger. I know he's giving weight away. So, yeah, the yeah. interesting horse is number eight, Wind Water. We'll see how good he is today. Yeah, he's got those earmuffs on, which is an interesting piece of equipment change. So he's at four to one. You mentioned set to go and the line of form with Sheldon on the run to... Uh, I take it you're going on the run to Flower Bomb, are you? Flower Bomb run, yeah. The only difference there, Alal, is that uh, set to go did not have blinkers on that day, or did he? No, I think he had a tongue tie. Um, He seemed to run better with the blinkers on, but he's not the easiest horse to ride by the looks of things. If you if you study the form, but I quite liked uh, I quite liked Set to Go. I thought he had a chance. Um, La looks like he's frozen there for some reason. I don't know what's happened there, but um, again, uh, La's leaning towards Sheldon. He thinks Sheldon is the horse to beat there. He's at five to two. Um, and uh, Lyle, you're back with us. Uh, I was just mentioning Sheldon. Okay. I was I was more in the camp of um, of set to go than I was on Sheldon. But but you mentioned that there was that form line there, and then Windwater, yeah. and then at a huge price, uh, May Queen because it ran such a good race last time out. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. moving along to race eight. See if we can pick out anything in race eight at quarter past four. It's a Phillies and Mares ninety handicap over twelve hundred meters. Uh, no scratchings here. Chase Mourjean rides number four, Golden Aspen, as the jockey change. And you can put a pressure halter on number two, Midnight Gem. The favorite is Cold Fact, won so well last time out. They put the pacifiers back on, 12 to 10 to carry 60 and a half. Yep, that's going to be my selection with the big weights and all. Cold Fact, the way that, he, that she did win last time, like you said, that was so impressive. She is up one and a half kilograms, but again, look at that time, Nico. 67 point something. I've just blocked it off in my book. 67.87. Yeah, 67.87. Course record, course record 67.5. Yeah. So, yes, is up one and a half kilograms, but the way that she won last time, she will be my first selection if she runs anything like that. Wow. Number seven, Rockets Red Glare at eight to one. Definitely my value because on the penultimate, did beat both Silver Winter and Aga Heat, who both come into the play. 
and then number four, Golden Aspen. Um, four kilograms better off with cold fact for five and a half lengths than last time. This Golden Aspen's been good to us um, on our show, so I yeah. won't leave her out. So not easy. One, seven, four, five, six. Okay. Um, just quickly go back to the previous race. Remember I said I was talking about times there. Um, the reason yes. why I like May Queen, did you see the winning yes. time last time out? Let's have a look there. Yeah, 50. Oh, geez. Yeah. That's ridiculous. It ran, wow. in, it ran, it won May Queen, won in a time of 55,51 over 1,000 meters. The course record wow. was 55.31. So it was 0. 0.2 seconds outside the course record. And it's sitting at, at 16 to 1, May Queen. Let's put my um, queen in. That's a very fast. That's very, very fast. Wow. Yeah, that was very fast. That was what I was talking about the times. Now, you mentioned cold fact. Cold fact was only in its last win at 0. 0.37 outside the course record, which is funny enough, set yeah. up by Pinch Hit, which we labeled yeah. uh, Brandon and yeah. I when it won that day at, at, at the Vol. So, yeah, I get That's your right. on cold fact. I just think at the prices that Midnight Gem might be a price. To include, but I know she's riddled with issues. She's her own yeah. worst enemy. She, she, she often doesn't load, so she might well be scratched. But um, I thought she was a bit of a runner. I do like cold facts, and the other one, I think you mentioned Rockets Red Clear, did you? As as a possible, I did. I quite love. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the value. Nico. Yeah, she might well be the value here at eight to one. Okay, yeah, I think she's been look, she's been looked past. She's got fifty two and a half kilograms. Yes. she's beaten some of these. And she took on a much stronger race last time. People must yeah. know that. That was a strong race. Yeah. Yeah. So she might well be in the mix there, Rockets Red Clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Race nine is the last of the day. Runs at tw at quarter to five. It's a Phillies and Mayor 74 handicap. It's over 1,200 meters in race nine. No scratchings and no further changes there. What's your feeling on the last? I thought open again, Nico. I'm actually going leaning towards number four, Princess Ilaria. This daughter of Pomodoro with Gavin Darina. And it all goes down to that maiden form line when she's waited to beat Little Miss Moneybags. And uh, so that's uh, Princess Ilaria first. Number five, Defender of Rights, my second selection, who does hold number six, Gin and Tonic. And then, of course, we have to put Little Miss Moneybags in, dropping down in class. She's running well. There's that May Queen run. And then number two, Second Breath. So the way I read it was a um, bit of value for first. Four, five, one, and two, Nico. Yeah, again, I think they've got the prices wrong here. Um, how can mm. Princess Alara be 7 to 1 and Little Miss Moneybags 28 to 10 when you look at the form line? Form doesn't lie. Um, mm -hmm. Princess Alaria is down a kilo and Little Miss Moneybags is up two. Yep. And there's 0.2 of a length between them. One is 3 to 1, one is more than double the price. I can't believe it. And number four, number four is drawn one, and she's got twelve winners behind her in the last three runs. So Again, not the I worst. I can't formula. understand the pricing up here. I, I, you know, whilst yeah. I'm a big fan of Little Miss Moneybags going further, and I think she'll improve over the the, the classic twelve hundred because it's a turn and she's got a longer time to run into it. I think the thousand was far too short last time out. I make her a runner, but I think at the prices, yeah. I'll be rather on Princess Ilari at seven to one than Little Miss Moneybags at three to one. Funny enough, Absolutely. I think both of them might have to play second fiddle to defender of rights because I, I liked it last time. Yeah. I back down in trip. Pinch it, set a course record on that day, which we've just mentioned. Correct. And uh, she was a bit behind Pinch it, uh, was defender of rights, but I think she's in the mix too. So I think it's very much as you say, those are the potential uh, ones to fight it out in race number nine. Lyle, that yeah. brings it to an end, by the way, for those people that didn't join the uh, Clock in the Gallop direct line. There is another one coming up at the end of this month, February, for the Cape Derby weekend, which starts on the 24th of February and ends on the uh, 27th. Lyle, have a good off day. I'll make the trek out to the Vol for you. Mm. We'll take it on the chin. Please, and, yeah, please uh, help, uh, help the punters in race one and two because those we need the help. Yeah, we'll have to go and have a look at those horses close mm. up and personal and give you the feedback on them. Lyle, have a great day. Thanks again for your input. You. It's Guinea's Day on Saturday. We're looking forward to chatting to you then because I think there's quite a bit yep. to talk about for Guinea's Day. Certainly. Looking like a lovely day's racing. Looking forward to that. Wonderful. Thanks, Lyle. Have a great day and uh, enjoy it.